Well, good morning and thank you for uh, coming along. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that this is a pretty big weekend for the city with the turn of, return of Test Match Rugby here. Uh, we expect quite a few visitors into the city uh, to sort of see what's going on here, but I also would expect uh, that they will note that there is a, a pretty solid community here and that life is continuing, uh, albeit a little bit uh, uh, differently, but in a very, very strong way. I'd like to begin this morning by giving you an update on our red zone offer process. Our first land uh, decisions were made on the 23rd of, of June last year and the first offers were sent to red zone property owners in August of 2011. Insured owners of 7,253 properties in the residential red zone have been given two offers. Just to repeat, repeat what they are, Offer one is that the Crown will pay the most recent rating valuation for land, buildings and fixtures and take over all insurance claims for damaged property. Option two, uh, the Crown will pay for the most recent rating valuation for the land and take over the owner's EQC claim for land damage only. The property owner retains the benefit of all the other insurance claims and will continue to deal with the EQC and their insurer to settle those claims. So far, 6,570 property owners of the 7,253 uh, total have returned the consent forms which allow the Crown to access information to enable the offer to be made by CERA. Uh, as the one year anniversary for the offers, uh, or the first offers, uh, comes up, we have reached a major milestone. As of today, 5,054 property owners have signed a sale and purchase agreement with the Crown. 1,155 have chosen option one, and 3,899 have chosen option two. This means that 70% of those in the residential red zone areas have chosen an offer. I think that is very significant uh, so far ahead of the uh, final date. I'm very pleased that so many of those families have made these decisions. Those suburbs are unsuitable for continued residential occupation and their decision will allow them to move on and build a more positive future. The cost to the Crown to date is $762 million. For remaining qualifying property owners in the red zone areas, there's still time to make a choice for one of the Crown offers. All red zone qualifying property owners had 12 months from the date of their first offer letter or the 31st of May 2013, whichever comes first, to accept that offer. The exception is the most recently red zoned land in South Brighton and South Shore West. These areas have different dates. The final date they can select for settlement is the 30th of June 2013. I want to now make an announcement about uh, extending the uh, categories of the red zone in a very small way. Uh, this morning I want to announce that the Crown is extending the residential red zone offer to include residential properties that were under construction at the time of the 23rd of February earthquake in the red zone. There are 17 properties covered by this extension. These properties had building works insurance but were unable to get land insurance at the time of the earthquake and so did not fit the criteria for the Crown's red zone offer. The land insurance through EQC is triggered by a full house policy which can only be uh, assigned once a dwelling is completed. The majority of these homes are, are now completed or nearly completed and their owners are essentially in the same boat as their red zone neighbours. So this decision is consistent with the Crown's recovery principles it will enable these people to also get on with their lives following the hardship caused by the earthquake events. There are a further seven non-residential properties owned by not-for-profit organisations in the residential red zone areas. These properties are also covered by this announcement uh, and this extension. These organisations had insured their buildings, but being not-for-profits and non-residential, uh, they were not able to insure the land. Both these groups of properties, uh, both those under construction and the non-residential, uh, um, not-for-profit organisation buildings, did have building insurance and were insured uh, in the most uh, comprehensive way they could be 
for the status of your property. Extending the offer means that they will too have certainty about relocation and be able to continue to play uh, important roles in the recovery of the community. The owners of uh, those properties now eligible for red zone uh, offers uh, as of today have up until the 30th of April 2013 to settle their sale with the Crown. My third announcement this morning is about the introduction of a review process for those ins uh, qualifying insured residential property owners who wish to query their land zoning. Zoning of flatland in Greater Christchurch began in June last year and was completed last month. As I've said previously, 7,253 properties have been zoned red uh, as unsuitable for continued residential occupation due to significant earthquake damage. A further 180,000 properties were zoned green as suitable for residential occupation with conditions in some cases. Approximately 550 people have now contacted Sarah over the past year to request a review of their zoned status. The majority are in the green zone and wish to be zoned red. 80 are red zone property owners seeking redesignation to green. We've established an advisory group comprising three SERA officials with expertise in public policy, law and geotechnical engineering, and in addition uh, an independent member, Dr Keith Turner, has also been appointed. Dr Turner is presently Chairman of New Zealand N uh, NZX listed Fisher & Paykel Appliances and is a Distinguished Fellow of the Institute of Professional Engineers of New Zealand. He was previously CEO of Meridian Energy. The advisory group's role will be to robustly assess the requests for rezoning. They will consider a number of possibilities in the context of the original decision as well as possible boundary anomalies. Flatland property owners wishing to query their zoning still have until the 30th of June of 2012 to make an application for review to SERA. The advisory group will complete its review and report back to applicants by the 30th of, Ju Ju of July 2012. All of these announcements today I think show steady progress in sorting out the very considerable damage to our physical environment, built property and our lives over the past 21 months. We still have decisions to make about the remaining white zones on or around the Port Hills. Reaching conclusions for those areas is our number one priority and many hours are being put in by all those who are party to those decisions. I'm confident that we will meet our 30th of June target for those white zone decisions and Roger will indicate some of the work programs that are going on there in a few minutes. So the Port Hills, we're working very hard um, to try and get those, uh, get those decisions made by the end of this month. Um, we're working with the City Council people, a big range of engineers, engineers have done the field work but are now we're going through that with them um, and we're working very, very hard to get that done by the end of the month. They're hard issues, they're about rockfall, landslides and also the cliff collapse as well. 1,700 properties up there are still white and 540 of them have got section 124 notices. So our focus is very much getting those people back into those houses as quickly as we can. Um, we've also opened some major roads, as you will have enjoyed today maybe. So Durham Street came open um, last night, um, running from the direction it's always run, which is um, north to south. It's only one lane bes beside the Crown Plaza, but I think it's made a lot of difference to some people just getting to work today. Later on today, by five o'clock tonight, we're going to have Gloucester Street open, and there will also be one way, but in this case, one way from um, east to west, um, and that will also make a difference. Going past the press building by the um, Isaac Theatre Royal, that will only be one lane, which is why it can only be one way. But that will mean the red zone will then be split by Gloucester Street, so they'll then be able to end up having two entrances into the red zone on, um, at Colombo Street there. Um, just reminding people, it is winter. Um, if they've got um, winter heating issues and so on, there are various places they can go, including the EQC. EQC have got this winter program. Um, if they want support around that, they can ring 0800 Damage. But also the ECA program, I used to chair ECA, the Energy Efficiency, Energy Efficiency and Conservation Authority, also have their Warm Up New Zealand Heat Smart program. 
and that's a program which is very relevant, especially on a day like today. And that's got subsidies of up to 60% for people to put insulation into their houses, but also subsidies up to $1,200 for heating appliances as well. So it's very important when people are vulnerable, they are actually taking, the, taking care and keeping their houses warm. Um, and lastly, Sarah's got a new uh, supplement out. It's a Greater Christchurch Recovery Update, and it's in the letterboxes. Um, it's gone out with the press. Um, there's a lot of information about the recovery progress. It's good at reading. I'm also happy to